Well, welcome you all. We are going to today, today's a one day seminar to give a little bit of an introduction to two of the most precious and ancient threads in Chinese medicine, which for reasons I will never understand, have been preserved and are coming alive in our time to assist us as physicians. This morning we're going to talk about a protocol that the, 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 the original name that was given to me was called the internal dragons, the seven internal or external dragons that conquer the seven internal or external demons. It was brought to the West by J.R. Worsley. How this protocol was handed to him is not known by anyone other than those close to him. It was woven into uh, an equally ancient thread in Chinese medicine which which he called five element acupuncture classical five element acupuncture Chinese medicine is a living tradition from the beginning of time it's a conversation through time it's a conversation in the seen literate world written word passed from generation it's also a conversation between the unseen world and the seen world Chinese medicine is a tradition of medicine that is looked after from the unseen worlds by great masters. So there are changes through time that happen. Those changes have to do with the ability for the physicians to meet the difficulties of their time. So that's a larger context. The conversation today is not about the tradition as a whole. Um, the seven internal and external dragons are really a song. They are a very, very, very ancient song. The Taoist tradition of medicine has preserved certain structures of intelligence that were given to humans at the very, very beginning. So this particular protocol is 14 points, seven on the front and seven on the back. The Song of the Seven Dragons. As I was given this protocol by J.R. Worsley, it is a protocol that is used to treat a very particular disturbance of the spirits which in translation in our understanding is called possession this protocol arrives into the western psyche the word possession arrives in the western psyche and there is terrible terrible confusion about what this is so part of the conversation today is to find a common language um, whereby we can be trained to face this dilemma person by person by person possession from as I understand this from the Chinese tradition of medicine is when a level of obstruction or confusion becomes rooted in the person so that it is impossible for the spirits to move freely. Possession is a rearrangement of the heavenly spirits and the earthly spirits. When a possession is in place, a person cannot 
walk out on their own. So Taoist medicine is an alchemical tradition of medicine. By that, it has the capacity to transform that which is dense into light. A human being can be transformed into gold. Medicine, the tradition of medicine, is one place where that firing can happen. Something happens when someone becomes very ill. There is something tremendous that can happen when there is a collapse. And through time, it is the physician that meets that person at the door. There is a calling to that which is perfect. When everything else goes, that call initiates or can initiate an alchemical prayer process. So in the alchemical tradition of medicine in, in China, as well as the alchemical tradition of medicine in the West, the fundamental understanding is that an individual human being is an exact replica of the entire cosmos. So that a, a fully realized human being would be every river, every star, the communication between all birds. There is something in this thread of the Song of the Seven Dragons which restores the possibility of a fully realized human being. This song, these two protocols which can work as one, restore the true chi of the patient. So what does this mean? The true chi is the light of heaven interacting with the map of your birth. We are each born as a unique expression of God, of the Tao. The Taoist tradition of medicine originally was not used to treat illness. It was used to, uh, to support the cultivation of this gift of life. power of the light of heaven interacting with the essences of your birth. From that arises chi, motion, the potential for transformation. When this fundamental relationship gets interrupted in a human being, and if that interruption actually roots in the person, the lights begin to go out. The direction begins to leave. So the mystery of the microcosm, without an appreciation for this, it's very difficult to enter these protocols, these seven point protocols. Why are the internal dragons reachable through points on the stomach channel? Why are the external dragons reachable through points on the bladder channel? The protocol was given as seven. Seven points, a combination to a lock. Very little information was given about what actually happens in this protocol. I was trained to become an expert point locator with these seven points. Through the devotion and the precision of these seven points, like a good locksmith, 
a force inside of the human being, the fire within the earth, the dragon fire within the earth would be unleashed. And anything that did not belong to that original map would go. If you have a fire that is clean enough, hot enough, strong enough, it will purify anything. Part of the reason that I started um, teaching this protocol and working with students over many years to become capable of using it came from my own clinical experience of again and again and again standing in front of a wall and not being able to see, not having the training to see the nature of the wall not having the training to see through the wall. Being absolutely certain that though the treatments might temporarily alleviate a symptom, that nothing was actually happening. I could feel that. So a certain frustration building through time. I had been given this protocol, but I wasn't able to be the instrument of it again and again, patients' frustration of coming, knowing that something could happen. Patients would stay for years knowing that there was something that could happen, but that it, I wasn't able to get to the other side of it with them. So it was through, really, my time, and um, particular suffering of this time that I kept coming to the doorstep of this protocol. I knew that JR had given us something that wasn't in any other tradition of medicine, let alone acupuncture, let alone medicine. So we're, we're talking today to give us an ability to actually bring this protocol into our practices more fully to become a little bit more able to speak about this with our patients, to inspire us to, to undergo the training, to the opening of our eyes, the opening of our ears, the opening of our fingertips, to enter something that would allow us into the microcosm of the macrocosm. In very ancient days, the Song of the Seven Dragons worked with the weather gods. There was a, in very ancient of days, human beings were not the center of the universe in the way that we are today. Human beings lived inside of life more. Human beings bowed down before a mountain to seek its aid at the beginning of winter, that the storms would not level their home. The modern ego uh, didn't exist. Chinese medicine comes from a time where it was not a person's belief that they were here to become someone. Health was not understood to be the full potential of my mind. The Song of the Seven Dragons restores right relationship of the spirits and the essences, of spring to autumn, of summer to winter. Of potential and authenticity. In many cases without this protocol, it's it's impossible to reach the root of a person. 
Possession from a Chinese point of view is caused by three things. Internal causes of disease, external causes of disease, or miscellaneous causes of disease. In all of these cases, to be able to diagnose possession, one has to be able to, to stand at the border of the seen and the unseen. You cannot see sadness. So the internal causes of disease are the seven internal emotions. A possession can be set up by something so enormous and traumatic, a level of sadness, a level of rage, that happens in one instant. You, you are present and watching your family murdered. A possession can be set up because there is too much for the person to integrate in one moment, and it actually locks in to the heart. More commonly, the internal causes of disease end up as a possession gradually over time. A certain habit, a certain constancy of experience that one day locks in. Possessions by internal causes of disease very often look like depression. Um, anxiety disorders, terrible sleep disorders, confusion about relationship. And I'm not talking about I, my relation, my intimate relationship ended last year and I'm still a mess. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about deep confusions between me and thee that someone may have lived their life with. The word possession is used because what happens is the spirits, the gift of heaven, the gift of God to animate your life cannot move freely. In the Taoist tradition, this is the image of the spirits are the birds. The birds can't land. They're always flying around. There's no serenity. A possession is, is that it actually becomes impossible for the birds to land. Many, many people will live for many years not possessed, but in great distress. And then one more thing will happen. I don't want to lock in. Now the symptoms may not change overnight, but as a practitioner being able to see, oh my goodness, this actually can't move now. You know, it's like you throw your garbage into a certain place on the property. You have a dump on your property. And for the first 10 years, if you left, it wouldn't take very long for the earth to cover that over and it would be fine. The earth could integrate it. But at what point does the landfill, can the earth no longer compensate for the landfill that you've created? So this would be internal causes of disease. External causes of disease also are unseen. The wind, the cold, the heat, the dryness. There are certain possessions that happen because someone's nature doesn't match the climate they're born into. You can get certain possessions by cold and damp because of a living in a cold and damp climate. You can get possessions by cold, wind, damp, heat, fire, because of specific exposures. You get hypothermia, swimming. It can actually become a possession that is held in the body, mind, spirit. And no matter what you do, you cannot move it yourself. I always say to people, if you would meet Jesus or Kidder on the road, and if you knew you met them, if for some reason you were awake enough to recognize them, and you took their hand and looked in their eyes, 
it could be lifted. But not many meet Jesus on the road directly. So given that you don't have an extraordinary meeting through the eyes where the spirits are called and, and you are reborn from that experience, the only way that I know of that this can clear is through a relationship with a practitioner. The Chinese tradition of working with possession goes all the way back to the beginning of recorded medicine. It has not been disrupted like it was in the West. There are different understandings of it through time. There was a time when it was understood that all illness was rooted in wrong relationship of the spirits. So all medicine was an invocation to the spirits of the trees, to the spirits of the dead, to the beings that hold the shape from the unseen of this world. We don't live in that world now, but I will say that clinically possession is becoming increasingly common. It's hard for me to imagine that one could be an acupuncturist in this time without knowing how to work with this protocol. The ecological imbalance in the seen world, in our world, is so severe. Species are dying every day. The air is changing texture every week. The glaciers are melting. This crisis is also happening in the unseen worlds. There's a terrible imbalance happening and human beings are not adapting to how quickly everything is changing very well. So possessions are becoming more common again. So the third area of possession are the miscellaneous causes. Some of the miscellaneous causes of disease are too much sleep, not enough sleep, too much sex, not enough sex, diet, extreme eating only potato chips. Certain addictions would come under the category of miscellaneous causes of disease. Also included in that are wrong relationship with other intelligences of the unseen world. The Chinese call them the Gui. There are possessions where there has been a, a collision. Learning how to diagnose these different kinds of possessions is essential. Most of the time, my position to these protocols, internal dragons and external dragons, is their capacity to restore the true qi, to restore the integrity of the central axis. In Chinese medicine, this has to do with the heart, the human heart. And the central axis is the ability at the level of the spirit for the human being to be living from the heart. So there's a question about clarifying what I mean by the central axis. This is a fundamental structure that a, a, a physician in the Chinese system of medicine would be rooted in. In order to live the original breath, in order to live this gift of life that a human being is given upon birth, really. There is an understanding of how the spirits are arranged in a human being. So the central axis has to do with the inspiration of the quality and capacity of a human life from the heart. The inspiration is arising with every breath through the heart. And there is a natural movement into the purpose then of this birth and then the capacity to walk it. So the purpose is the spirit called the Yi, which is housed in the spleen, stomach and spleen. 
It is the earth. It is the ability to walk among the earth, to be part of this creation. The ye to a bumblebee would be the head of the stamen. There's a terrible confusion in the West about the yi. We have identified it with personal accomplishment. Now, I'm not saying it isn't that, but it is far more than that. Personal accomplishment. It would be in the ancient world understood that you were born to the task of being a physician. You did not achieve it. You were given it. And through maintaining the simplicity of your devotion to the source of life, you would be made into it. So the yi is to arrive from the gift of the divine. What happens in the West often is we go to schools where through our relationship with our peers, our teachers, our counselors, someone says, it would be a good idea for you to be dot, dot, dot. You will make a good living. Again, nothing wrong with this. But if it is not arising from the natural movement of the spirits and the essences in you, the ye, the purpose of your life, will stand separate from this movement. So certain depressions, for instance, are that as a young person, you decided you were going to be and it actually doesn't match you. And so there's a conflict that's deeply internal that the physicians have not been trained to see with compassion, to move with. So the yi is the idea of your life. It's also the idea of your day. It's also the idea of right now. Without the ye, Zach and I could not have a conversation today. It's what gives us an experience of our individuality so that we may engage at the level of the heart. Many, many people, when they say, I, I'm lost, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. Now that can mean many things, but in this context, it can very often be that the yi has lost relationship to the Shen, to the divinity of life. So as a physician, one of the first levels of working at the level of the spirit is to restore this relationship between the yi and the Shen, the central axis. So a possession, the internal dragons, the need for the internal dragons, works with the yi. It works with this breach that happens between the divinity of the life given you and your ability to know how you fit into it. Or even guess at it. It can get so bad that you don't even have a guess. So then the third leg of the central axis is, the, is called the je. It's the spirit that is housed in the kidney. It is the will of life. It is your capacity to walk this idea. So you can have a possession at the level of the je. You can have someone who absolutely knows who they are. They've known from the day they were born. They've known they are here to be a fireman. And they were born without the use of their legs. or they had an injury and lost use of one leg. And that physical injury went to the level of their mind and then went to the level of the spirit. And they are a one-legged person who cannot fight fire. That's a silly example, but this is actually how it happens. So it is possible to release the grip of the feet. 
so that someone can begin to walk it. Someone who knows they are a writer, they know the name of the book, they know what they have to say, and they cannot do it. This can be a level of possession at the level of the je, which would be unraveled, transformed, fired in such a way that the potency returns, the capacity for the character for the yi is, is the is an idea, the character for the je is an idea with feet. So the central axis is your capacity to know you are a physician, to apply to school, to get into school, to secure the funding, to go to school, to finish, to take your qualifying exams. To make a business card and to introduce yourself to someone. You are in the position for the divinity of life to now move through you, to reach through you. So that when you are standing in a grocery line and someone falls in front of you and you help them, you are in a position to engage a conversation with them as a servant of life. That may include the possibility of treatment, but certainly would allow the spirits to move through you to them. The central access is interrupted at best and completely um, severed at worst when there is a possession. To be capable through a living tradition of medicine, to be an instrument of something from the beginning being restored is an honor that I could never, ever communicate in English. I could possibly sing a song, a note, where one could feel what it is like to have this protocol alive in your hands. The capacity to look into the eyes of someone who internally is living in an asylum and say to them, I will walk with you and we will walk out. And it will, we will do this treatment and then we will walk for three to five years. We will walk very carefully, very closely, and we will come out. To be able to say that and mean it comes from living with this protocol. It will teach you how to be a human being. It will, it will restore your own central axis as a practitioner. One of the things today, because we are going to speak about both the Song of the Seven Dragons and the Song of the Thirteen Ghost Points, one of the things that I want to say, and I will say it again and again, is these ancient, ancient protocols, which are handed physician to physician to physician to physician, they are living. You cannot read about them in the book and use them. One of the things about them is, is that they treat the patient and train the practitioner at the same time. They work inside of the relationship between the practitioner and the patient, between the teacher and the student. The Taoist would say that that relationship is the first relationship. There are different octaves of that first relationship. Physician, patient, teacher, student, different octaves, same relationship. It is the first arena of yin yang. It is, it is in some traditions said to be the only real relationship possible as a human being, because it's through that relationship that reality can be experienced. Taoist medicine is based on the heart. Illness is understood to originate in the heart.
the relationship of the physician to the patient is where right relationship of the human heart is restored. Please don't forget this. It is so easy in this time to, in a time where we expect a response to our letter to be within the hour, where we go on the internet to get that book we've always wanted tomorrow. We live in a time of instant gratification. We may be in different relationship to it, but it is our time. It is what we are. And we are physicians of a tradition of medicine that works with time. It works with the movement of the seasons. We don't get ill overnight. We will not get well overnight. Restoring true chi may be the most remarkable task a human being could have said yes to doing. To be able to say, we will walk through this, and by the grace of God or the grace of the divinity of life, it will be different. These particular songs um, require the participation of the patient, uh, excuse me, of the practitioner. You cannot do this treatment like you could administer penicillin. You cannot just put seven needles in and sit back and watch something happen. Perhaps the only people who could do that would be master gardeners because of their experience of setting seeds. It would come from a certain kind of devotion of understanding how the earth herself will grow anything. If you were to address these points with needles from that perspective, you might be able to set seven needles and sit back. But if you set seven needles like you put seven nails in the wall or move seven chairs in the room, nothing will happen. Perhaps the patient will feel a bit more relaxed. To move a possession is like moving a mountain. Or taking the blinds off of all of the windows of a house in a moment. Or putting someone's legs back on. You cannot be the instrument of a possession lifting without your own relationship to the divine. This is a protocol that if you become its student and therefore an instrument of it in service to another, you will see the blind see again. At your hand, you will watch the lame walk again. You will watch the dead come back. When the spirits are not in residence, we are not alive. We are robotic. This is from J.R. Worsley. When the spirits are not in residence, the mind is a robot. It is repeating habits of thought. There is nothing spontaneous and authentic being engendered. Claude Lahr and Elizabeth Rochat de la Valle gave us as physicians of the Chinese medical tradition are such tremendous, tremendous gift of translating the early medical classics into French and then into English.
If you just displace the chi in treatment, you are not doing much. But if you can entice the spirits back where they belong, then you are a great acupuncturist. You are caring for the ability of the spirits to return, to make their beauty of ruling that particular life. Thus, treatment is a question of the ruling of life, not of chi or blood. Suppose you face a serious illness in a patient, but not an incurable one. Perhaps the treatment is good, but it does not succeed. Why? If the spirits are not operating, no treatment will succeed. This is a very profound statement from antiquity. If the spirits are not operating, no treatment will succeed. So the, the difficult question that I ask myself after 15 or 17 years of clinical, full-time clinical practices, do you know how to see if the spirits are in residence? And my honest answer was no. The house fell down. I found a teacher to be unmade. Needles are the way means that they are the treatment and the technique of the treatment. When the essences and spirits cannot enter or offer something, or if the yi, the purpose, and the je, the will, cannot govern or rule, then the patient is unable to offer herself a response from her own essences and spirits. Often the situation comes when there is too much emotion, desire, craving, concern, worry, sorrow, or the like in the patient. It is fine to have these feelings sometimes, but when there is no limit, no break from them, the incessant blows finally bring about the departure of the spirits. You as practitioner may not be able to adapt a treatment to this person. If you cannot put your own willpower in the needles to rectify the spirits and give the patient an opportunity to re-enter into possession of herself, or if you make an error or misinterpret something or are not perfect, then the treatment will not succeed. So from the beginning, what has been left, the footprints in the written tradition of Chinese medicine, it is impossible to become an instrument of the spirits in another without the cultivation, without the training of yourself. The Song of the Seven Dragons will train you. With the help of a teacher, this song will train you to stand in the central axis of, your, of the, your own gift of life. From that place, you will be able to see as clearly as that you have shiny earrings on, Grace. You will be able to see whether the spirits are alive in the eyes, whether they are in the complexion of the person. Those are the two classical places where you can see the spirits. You will be able to hear the sound of the voice, whether the spirits are animating it, whether the sound of the voice is spontaneous or habitual. These are tremendous powers that are returned to you as a physician, as a human being. In our school, we train physicians, we train gardeners, we train artists, we train people who have said yes to being in service in a very precise and disciplined way in our time. The disciplines are the same, the task would be different. To learn to see, to learn to hear, to learn to feel, to learn to smell, to learn to use the mind in service to the connection with another human being, which the traditional language in the classics is to ask. 
This is the training of all physicians, of all traditions. It's certainly the training of all acupuncturists. But there is a level of this training which is less common in our time than it was in antiquity. Part of the traditional training in Chinese medicine was, because it was a living oral tradition, was the form of apprenticeship. And for many, many, many years, 10, 20 years, you were being trained in such a way that, that your capacity to be alive was enhanced, to follow the spirits, to follow the, the walk and the hands and the glance of, of, of the master. This made it possible to stand at the first point of the internal dragons, the master point that is halfway between Ren 14 and Ren 15, one of the two points of the 360 points or 370 points that reach to the void of the heart. You could stand there and wait. You could stand there and wait until a hand was given for you to follow. This is not common training in our time. Part of my personal passion, my personal interest in this particular protocol is, is that it was a treasure that was saved. It was brought to the West shortly before the Cultural Revolution in China. It certainly wouldn't have survived that political genocide. It's a protocol that works at the fundamental relationship of light and darkness in a person. Both are necessary to be a human being. It's the relationship between them that decides whether you live your, uh, a, a life that, in which your soul learns something. To the Chinese, the purpose of being a human was to become an immortal. How would we say this in the West? Something like that your soul returns to God, we would say in, we in the West. That something real happens. When you die, the yi and the je disappear. When you die, your name the house you lived in, who you were even married to, what you did for work, gone. All of that is a means for the soul to learn something. All that remains within minutes of your death is the hun, the spiritual soul, and that which is directly the divine, the shen, returns to where it came from, unchanged by your life. So for, for the Taoists as well as for Western mystics, the only thing that is real is what happens at the level of your soul. So these ancient protocols reach to that level. You cannot move a mountain that has grown inside of someone by pushing the mountain. You reach to the intelligence of the earth herself inside of an individual human being. The earth can transform anything. She is so powerful. The Song of the Seven Dragons can evaporate an ocean that has become toxic in someone. It works with the fundamental rhythms of life. It works with the power of Genesis. Now this is not to say that every single person that you use this protocol with will go back to the very beginning. That would be ridiculous. It's not the point for many, many people. That would have no relevance for, for many people to speak of that or even that that happened but that something is unraveled so that something more essential can begin to work than the, than the manifestation of the human mind 
when you die, the contents of your mind will be as if they never existed. This is the fundamental practice in all spiritual traditions, is to pierce the illusion of the mind. Real medicine is a place where that happens. When I was a child, my pediatrician, every single time I left, said, you know, any time you can come here. Even if you run away, you can come to my house. He was the needle. Every single time there was a sound of love from him to me that is as alive today as it was when I was seven. This protocol cannot work without that capacity to reach through to someone. Otherwise, it's just like hanging pictures on the wall. I'm urgent about this because it is getting worse. Even in my few years of work, the need for this protocol is increasing. The franticness in our culture is increasing. The fear of the world we are living in that we have created is increasing. The single most common illness in my clinic is loneliness. And people are in con contact with people more than ever on Facebook, on emails, on the phone, every way you can, you're in, people are in more and more connection. But the loneliness is getting greater and greater. From a Chinese point of view, this has to do with the fact that the spirits have scattered in most cases. The birds are around someone's life. They're not on the tree of their life. The sound of the communication of the birds is the connection between the worlds. The birds hold the connection between the inner worlds and this world, literally and also symbolically. There is a way through the IDs and the EDs, the Song of the Seven Dragons, that you see something being remade. You participate in something being reconstituted. It goes back to the parts, and then the parts make the whole. I have never been in this protocol in such a way that a battle ensued. This protocol comes long before the battle between the light and the dark. It comes from much earlier in human history. It comes from a time where human beings were part of the movement of life. It comes from, maybe we might say, the golden age. It has not been written down. It's been passed through an oral tradition. It's extremely simple, which does not mean it is easy. We have terrible images in the West of possession and exorcism and mortal battles between the light and the dark. This is not what this protocol is. This protocol trains you to become part of life again. The way a river brings water to a desert. 
the way a glacier arrives and changes the shape of land, the way rain comes. There would be a way to speak. There are several points that it's in the character of, but I think of it with the Song of the Seven Dragons, that they are prayers for rain in the most ancient sense. The Neijing tells us that the healing process is not just mechanical. It is not simply the placing of the needle. The most important thing for healing is the relationship between the practitioner, the spirits, and the patient. This relationship begins with the personal attitude and inner behavior of the practitioner. Your own spirits and forces must be in a good concentration in order to be able to evaluate the patient and to be able to rectify what is wrong in the movement of his or her vitality. It is your spirit which enables you to make the diagnosis, choose the points, and give a feeling of rightness to the patient at a high level without interfering with the patient's freedom. The treatment always takes place inside of this practitioner-patient relationship. So partly I speak of this as a way to, for us to learn how to speak to our patients. But I also, this seminar today is also a way to inspire you as practitioners to, to walk toward the trouble in our time. It's something from antiquity has been preserved for us to face into this unbelievable crisis in the ecology of life, the ecology of our spirits, how we are walking individually and as a group. Dispersing liver chi as a habit will not reach to the burning in the heart of another human being. There's nothing wrong with dispersing liver chi to alleviate anxiety or heartburn or discontent. In the right treatment protocol, it's absolutely essential. But if the birds are not in residence, nothing real will happen with it. You can fix a knee, but it's not real. Do you want to be physicians that are working as robots on other robots? Or do you want to align yourselves to these unbelievably precious songs? Each acupuncture point is a note. There are physicians through time that know how to play this instrument of 360 points. It is in the tradition for you all to receive this. The disease in our time, the level of disease in our time is such that it is necessary that some of us remember this. Three hundred and sixty points of light, three hundred and sixty places in the human being where you can become a servant to the mystery of life. You have access to the currents, the ribbons of intelligence coming from the Tao. You can be used to restore right relationship. 360 points. Each of them have guardians, footprints of the great ones. Some of the points are protected. Thank goodness from our ambition, from our sense of ineptitude that clouds our capacity.
this particular protocol, the Song of the Seven Dragons, reconnected me to the force of life in this tradition of medicine. It connected me to my teacher, who is still teaching me, though he has passed over. It is restoring me to right relationship to other sentient beings on this planet. It is putting me in my place, finally. Few, relief, the mystery of illness, the mystery of life. For anyone who has lived with a full on possession, it is utterly untenable. Life is not possible. I wish I could say it is rare. It is not. And what comes after this protocol? How do you reestablish life so that the spirits are in it? That's another day how to work with this extraordinary map of light that has been given to us, how to be with another in it. We have forgotten so much about what is possible as a human being. We have settled for so little. What we call human relationship is nothing compared to what is possible. We are petrified to suffer and we are petrified to have suffering relieved. So what's left? We want to get well on our terms. You know, the ancient traditions of medicine, if you got the nerve up to go to the door and knock and say, please help me, they would say, move in. The healer on the edge of town because it was understood that at the mercy of the forces of life, you will stand correctly. You will learn to stand correctly. The worst case scenario from my point of view for us as acupuncturists is that we become low grade magicians where someone says, my shoulder hurts. We put a needle in, the pain goes, voila. We have no idea what we've done. We have no idea what's happening. We have no deep regard for the rivers of light. That would be my worst case scenario, that we would lose the potency of this tradition by having quick fixes. And we would end up being like Band-Aids or aspirins. This particular protocol causes a tremble in the right way. Someone is returned to the light. You are returned to the light as an instrument of it. Both of these songs today, both of these protocols, are the instruments of what we call miracles. They go way beyond the personal agency of locating a point and putting a needle in it. You enter into the void of the heart in both protocols. You enter into the majesty of the divine and the will of the divine. And I promise you, it far exceeds your imagination.